Hey, good evening. Hola. Uh, if you have your Bibles, open to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. Uh, just for the establishing of the context, we'll start in verse 1. It says, Let, her, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, which suffer adversity as uh, being yourselves also in the body. And then marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. The whoremongers and adulterers uh, God will judge. Um, now this is somewhat connected, and this is going further down. It says, "Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for He had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper; I will not fear. Um, what man shall do unto me?" So our focus for tonight is going to be verse four. Um, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay. Seems kind of odd, okay, that me as a single person uh, preaching on marriage, but um, this is something that is needful. I don't know that necessarily there's an issue that we have here, but just it's needful overall uh, as our society present day uh, has a great problem, not with just promiscuity, uh, but with a perversion of what God had instituted uh, from the beginning, actually. Um, when and we see in Genesis that uh, after God had established creation, that he had made man in his own image, um, he saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone. And so he made him a help or a help that was suitable for him. And then um, basically they were together. And God was the one that instituted uh, that. He was the one not only that created Adam, he created Eve from Adam's rib, and he had, he was the one that had put them together. Now, following that, you have the fall, and then now you have sin introduced, and then curse following that, but nonetheless, God's design and God's original intent for that was that um, he's the one that brings together the couple. In other words, he raises a man, and then he raises a woman, and he's the one that puts them uh, together. And he's got a plan for them. In particular, uh, I think we've seen this in Sunday School, was that with regard to Adam in his original design was that God had given him a task. He had a job for him to do uh, and then the woman was to come alongside and to help uh, within and fulfilling the task. Uh, and that, though you have the marring of sin and then the, the difficulties added, um, following sin, uh, part of the curse was that uh, she's going to want to rule over him. Uh, another part of the curse is that she's going to bear pain in childbirth. And then the ground itself is going to have thorns and thistles. It's not going to give up uh, as, as fruitfully as it normally would uh, for them. And then that by the sweat of that brow that, that they're going to eat bread. So now the task that they had, it was still... I guess as arduous, you could say, but it wasn't as diminishing of their resources or their energy as it would be following the curse. In other words, the, they would still have to tend to the garden, uh, which was his particular task uh, that was given to him by God. But, well, the, the following that, they would be kicked out. Um, following, following the cursing, uh, they would be kicked out. But as far as his, he was to till the land, he was to go ahead and take care of um, I guess you could say the, the landscaping, but um, it wasn't as diminishing of his energy and his resources as it was uh, following, you know, the fall, following the curse uh, that was given. And God is the one that had brought again, created them, brought them together, and He had a purpose in particular for them uh, to fulfill. Go to First Thessalonians four. First Thessalonians four. Okay, 
Okay, uh, starting verse 1. So, furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, uh, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. And here's the reason, um, beyond the fact that God had given them the, the, the commandment, you know, abstain from it, you know, don't, don't go into fornication. It says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the adventure of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Okay, for God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. Okay, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, uh, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's kind of a mouthful here. Related to this, we're, we're going to see this. This is a continuing theme, uh, especially in Paul's writings, but they're not exclusive to Paul's writings that God has. And it's not exclusive to the Gentiles, by the way, uh, even though most of the time that the writing is given, it's given in particular to the Gentiles. Israel had a problem with this. Uh, and you see that, especially, well, not just in Judges, but you, you see it all throughout Israel's history, that um, not just committing you know, physical fornication, but that they would also give their heart to idols. And then the idolatry that they would, you know, they would turn aside to, uh, God considered that the same. Uh, it was the same difference. And we'll see that, we'll see that further on in, in the message. Um, so God had commanded, this is how you are to walk. And this is, uh, again, a uh, pastor has already preached through this and is covering this in his series on holiness and sanctification, but uh, God has called us to be different, okay? Uh, and the reason why is because he's different. He's not like anybody else. And we have his spirit in us, uh, and by default, when we have received him as Savior, that he places his name on us, and we are thereby ambassadors of him we are thereby also rep you know we're basically representatives of god god has for us to be able to uh show the world who he is um mind you a, a key principle in not just living for god and walking with god uh, but in also testifying of god to others is that we walk by faith which is not by sight okay so in other words we walk by faith not by sight so faith is not by sight. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come with God must believe that he is and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So God purposefully chooses to operate on the basis of faith. Okay, so he's not going to reveal himself beyond what he's already given with regard to he's given us his word, he's given us a conscience, he's given us his creation, and then he has us that the believers, those who have received him, that he's commissioned, he's committed unto us his word. Uh, we have his Holy Spirit within us, and uh, he's also committed unto us the task. Uh, he calls it the, uh, the ministry of reconciliation. So in other words, he desires to use us to see people reconciled to him, and we're just a means along with the Word of God and his Holy Spirit, uh, which really does not work in convincing a man's heart because he's the one that convinces men of sin, righteousness, and of judgment, and also convinces of actual what truth is. Uh, beyond what we already have as far as inner conscience and what we can uh, see, you know, uh, on the basis uh, of his, his, his creation. But he had called us to walk in holiness, and in particular, part of that is abstaining from fornication. Now, he says here in verse 4 that, okay, everyone should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay, so that vessel being your body. Okay, your body is a vehicle for doing the will of God, not perverting it, okay? Um, now, the word perversion, or pervert, is, is basically ideas of twisting, contorting. Uh, so when, when something's perverted, literally it'd be like it's twisted, it's contorted, it's, it's not from where, from what it should be. Uh, you have, say, you know, original image, and then you now you get a facsimile of it, but the facsimile is somehow twisted or contorted from what it should be. And that, that's, that's the idea of being perverted or, or a perversion of. And so God's 
original plan is that he has a man and woman together, and that's supposed to represent him. Uh, we'll see later on in Ephesians 5 as far as how that marriage itself is supposed to be a picture of Christ loving the church. And the idea behind that is that you have um, Christ is the husband, and then the church is the bride, and he's sanctifying the bride, which basically denotes that the bride isn't clean yet. In other words, she comes to him dirty. She takes, uh, or it, he takes her in as being unclean, but he cleanses her. He's cleansing her so that at the time when he's wanting to take her up, and then he's, he's and that's sacrificial love. The idea behind that is basically that he's sacrificing, giving him of himself uh, for this person who, I guess you could say in a sense, really doesn't deserve. Uh, we see that again uh, in Romans 5 when he talks about that, you know, God commanded the love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now that's in respect to salvation, but God's love towards us is in that respect all the way around. In other words, we're not, <laughs> there's nothing in us that is uh, redeemable or really carries any merit uh, to us to have, you know, God demonstrate his love towards us, but rather he, he loves us. And it's, it's really largely because that's who he is. That's his character. That's his nature. Okay, so we have here uh, his command, abstain from fornication. Uh, and then he gives a purpose here. This is one of many purposes. Uh, beyond the fact that he's already called us to walk like that, that's a, just a direct command. Uh, beyond the fact that it's representative of who he is, um, it, it says here that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. Uh, in other words, God, ha well, first, this isn't limited, by the way, fornication isn't limited to married folks, or unmarried folks. In other words, married, married folks. With them, it'd be adultery, but the thing is, God has called, obviously, married couples to be with each other and be faithful to each other. And that's another aspect of, as far as God's character, uh, his faithfulness. Uh, but the idea here is that um, unmarried persons, you think, okay, you have license. Not everybody does, but I mean, your flesh has that, has that perverted, perverted desire. Of, okay, I have license to do whatever I want. I'm not committed to anybody or whatever, and I don't have, you know... Uh, anybody I'm in a relationship with, so I can do you know, basically whatever I want. And the fact is, uh, one, it's not, well, we'll see this in 1 Corinthians 6, which we'll get ready to turn here, but it, it's not your body to do with to begin with. Uh, but the fact is, um, for you to pursue somebody and have an ulterior motive where the damage is done, that's, that's a defrauding. Um, now, you can carry, fornication extends, the idea with fornication is basically any illicit, it's not just the physical carrying out of an act, but it, it, it extends to the mental, the heart desire. So it's it's all encompassing. Uh, the, well, the word is pornea, and, and so that, you know, your your thought life is included in that. Uh, your, your, your heart passions, your lusts. Uh, it's not just the physical carrying out of an act. Um, and so a mindset has to be that, hey, I, God, this is an understanding, by the way, that um, if I go beyond, then I'm defrauding somebody. In other words, God has somebody for you. If he's giving you that desire to want to marry, then he has somebody for you. And you are to walk by faith, trusting that he's going to bring that person in his time as you faithfully seek to prepare yourself. So it makes sense. In other words, he's not looking to <laughs> rob you of, uh, you know, or make your life miserable, uh, make it to be where a lot of people think that, oh man, you know, if I live for God, it's going to be like just the worst thing in the world. You know, he's going to stick me out in the middle of nowhere and rob me of joy. But rather, God says that the only way to have your joy fulfilled is to keep his commandments. That's the only way to be able to have, you know, true fulfillment and satisfaction in life. By the way, this is one of his commandments of standing for fornication. Go to 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6.
Uh, starting at, well, you can, you can actually read the whole passage, but uh, starting at verse third, uh, verse 12, verse 12. Okay, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, the, body, the actual body parts of Christ, that's what he means by members. Shall I then take the members of Christ and, um, and make them the members of an harlot? You know, God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without or outside the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. And then what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so... Of the many sins that we would commit, that you can probably go down any laundry list of sins. You can go to Galatians 5, and then you can see where it, it, it talks about, uh, you know, the works of the flesh are these. And then he goes through a really long laundry list, uh, obviously fornication being one of them. Um, this is one of the ones that is specifically mentioned and addressed that this is actually against your own body. In other words, fornication destroys your body. It does something to your body. Whereas most sins are either external or internal. Um, oh, you could say, well, you know, drinking destroys my body or smoking destroys my body. Yeah, but this does as well. And it has really, really, really damaging effects um, and um, repercussions down the road. Um, but this one just basically destroys your body. And the fact is, you are not your own. Your body, if you are born again, if you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, uh, the fact is, you are not, you don't have any right to do with your own body, even what you want. You are God's. And the fact is, you are to surrender yourself, um, as he tells us in Romans. Uh, the only way to be able, actually the only way to be able to fulfill God's will in your life and to demonstrate it, uh, to prove that it is good, acceptable, and perfect, Okay, which God says of his own will, that it's good, acceptable, and perfect. Acceptable being that it's well-pleasing. It's the only thing that's going to bring you satisfaction and joy is to actually, one, uh, surrender yourself first, and then also, two, that you would renew your mind on, on, a, on a daily basis, um, that uh, you're to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so that's the only way to be able to fulfill God's will. But part of that is that, you know, you don't have any right this is not your life. It's actually God's life. It's on loan. You know, it's an allotment to you to do with. Uh, we are stewards of our bodies. We're stewards of our mind. We're stewards of not just our time, whatever talents that God has given us, whatever um, you know, riches or lack thereof that we would have. Uh, the fact is, everything we have, every single part of my body is actually God's. And so I am going to stand before him at some point, uh, be it after I die or we're taken up, and I'm going to give an accounting of the fact, you know, what did I do with the life that he has given me? And by the way, that includes what you do in your body uh, during the time appointed that you have on this earth. Uh, and so I don't have the right to do anything I want. Uh, with my body. It's actually God's. And destroying it by committing fornication uh, is something obviously that's not well pleasing and he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't desire. Uh, go to Ephesians, book of Ephesians chapter five. Be therefore followers of God 
as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and given us himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, in neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Okay, for this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God and uh, uh, in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Then no, no, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Therefore be uh, be therefore not um, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay, you know, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as uh, children of light. Okay, so he mentions again here. Uh, now, this is something that's pretty interesting. Uh, he he likens, he actually puts fornication in the same category as covetousness and idolatry. Okay, it, it, this is a, grammatically, this is a, a, uh, a structure where, uh, where he mentions, uh, where he mentions covetousness Okay, in verse 5 where he says, okay, nor covetous man who is an idolater. So in other words, covetousness and idolatry are synonymous there. And then also the idea that, um, you know, fornication, which is in an uncleanness or covetousness. Okay, so in other words, co fornication has the idea of coveting. Coveting is something that I desire or long for that basically doesn't belong to me. Okay, we see that covered in the last two of the Ten Commandments, if we were to go through. It, not exclusive to there, but that would be if you wanted to look where did, where, did, where did God even begin to mention anything with regard to that. You know, that you're not supposed to cover your neighbor's house, his donkey, his wife, and, and those things. But in particular, as far as coveting is the idea. Coveting is different than jealousy. Jealousy has the idea that this belongs to me, you know, and... I don't want anybody coming in to invade what rightfully belongs to me. Whereas coveting is, you know, I guess in a sense, like keeping up with the Joneses, you look at what they have is like, man, I want that. But the fact is, that's not yours. You know, it's not yours to want to go after, you know. Not not your neighbor's wife, not his donkey, not uh, any other thing, okay? It's not limited to that, but in particular, um, you know, you... Um, A lot of times, uh, I'm sure this isn't exclusive to guys, but this is more common in men, very common in men, is that you have guys that look at somebody and then they just continue and then they, in their mind, go to a place that they shouldn't, that's very inappropriate. And then, you know, they, oh, that's all right. And the fact is it's, no, it's not. One, well, one, because it's a misappropriation of, you know, God's resources. That's, your mind wasn't given to you to do that stuff with, but also the fact that that's not yours. You know, she doesn't belong to you unless God's given her to you, which in that case, you know, you'd be getting married. Uh, unless God's brought you two together, the fact is she's not yours. You know, uh, or same thing as far as like you get a woman that's chasing a, uh, you know, somebody that isn't, you know, um, maybe that's married or in a relationship or something like that. And then, okay, that's, that that's not right, right, because it's not your allotment. So God has, if God's given you a desire to marry, he's given somebody that same desire that he'll bring to you in the appropriate time. And that's where we have to trust God and walk by faith. Uh, and we need to seek first to be the right person uh, in our heart and our mind, and then also in the carrying out of our duties. But two, uh, the fact is I need to recognize, hey, that's not... That's not right. That's being a thief, in a sense, really. Uh, when you when you're coveting, you know that's that's part of the root of that. Is, you know you you're, you're, you want to you you don't want to wait. You you want to get the quick money. Uh, you want to be a thief. Uh, you want to rob somebody of what <laughs> you know is appropriate to them, but isn't appropriate to you. Uh, we've seen that in First Thessalonians as far as you can get to defraud somebody. You know that's not your allotment. God, if 
if God if God's giving you that desire, then He has an allotment that belongs to you. And you need to trust God to bring it to you in the appropriate time. Um, and then go to Colossians. He also likens in Colossians as well as far as that um, idolatry and covetousness are uh, are the same. And as far as fornication is concerned. Um, verse 3, or excuse, excuse, chapter 3, verse 1. Okay, so, um, chapter 3, verse 1, Colossians 3, verse 1. Okay, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Okay, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Now, beyond just the setting of our affection on things above, uh, he also asks us to, or commands us to do this, and that is, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. What's the first one? Fornication. Okay, now it's not exclusive to that, but that's one of the first things he's going to mention. And Paul's right, that's a prominent thing that he keeps reiterating flee fornication. Um, okay, mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness inordinate affection, or that which is inappropriate. Okay, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, so the idea with the idolatry is, we normally think of idolatry here, at least here in the U.S., unless you, unless you've maybe been in a third world country or in an environment where that is prevalent, but we don't usually just, you know, every everyday. Uh, American society, we don't recognize a lot of stuff that is actually it's legitimate idolatry before God, but it doesn't look like the idolatry of maybe the third world country. Um, if, if you've ever been like maybe in, a, in an area or an environment where it's heavily Catholic dominated, uh, a lot, especially the old school uh, Roman Catholics, they'll have, um, you know, you, you go in some homes, um, you, you know, you have the statues of all these different saints and then you have even, or you, you see this some, like if you go to a Chinese buffet or Chinese restaurant where they have like the little Buddha or like some little statue and then they, they bring like an offering of food to it, okay? Uh, I had a friend of mine when I was growing up, um, they were Cuban and then they would have like this huge statue that they would bring. I mean, they had a statue of Lazarus, of Mary, they had uh, a few other saints that were there and then they would leave before it, kind of a similar thing, you know, a plate of rice and then they would put a like, you know, a cup of coffee and different offerings and things like that. And I look at it and I was like, wait a minute. We weren't raised like that, even though we were kind of, I just thought it was kind of like, it, like, granted, we weren't religious growing up, but I just thought it was kind of weird because it's like, that. that it's a statue, you know, it's porcelain. It doesn't come alive and eat it, you know. At the end, you know, at the end, uh, whatever period of time they would do, they would just take it and then they'd just, you know, end up having to throw it away or whatnot and then, you know, do the same thing over and over again at their whatever their schedule was with regard to putting that forth. Uh, you go other other there's other places and they have similar type things, and so we think, okay, this person is bowing down to a rock or the statue or a piece of stone, you know, uh, not stone, but like of um, something fashioned from like precious metal. And you know, this, these things don't talk. You know, they can't do anything for you. They're just fashioned by man's hands. Uh, now, I, I do believe some of them, they have demon, demonic influence, uh, but the fact is it's still something fashioned by man's hands, you know, by a craftsman somewhere. Uh, it doesn't really have any kind of authority or power. And what you're saying when you turn from God, the true and living God, to this is that, you know, God, you don't do anything for me or you can't do anything for me. You don't please me. Uh, you don't satisfy me like this thing does when you know God's the one that gives you breath he's the one that provides for you uh, he's the one that's giving you the ability you have to be able to not only just to work but you know the different things as far as you're able to do in life uh, and the fact is he's he's real these things are just they don't have any power to them uh, and it's like one the world you know that's backwards thinking and so idolatry, it, I mean, it's really silly, really dumb, but the fact is we here in the U.S. end up a lot of times worshiping men or certain ideologies, and we look to men and be like, okay, 
uh, especially atheists, but it's not exclusive to atheists. I mean, it's all walks of life. You have people that lift up other men, and the fact is, that's just a created being that has been gifted by God. Now, he may misappropriate what he's been uh, entrusted with and seek to bring glory to himself rather than to God, but ultimately the fact is, you know, God's the one that's created him. You know, God's the one that's gifted him. Uh, and what he has is, is basically because it, God's given it to him. You know, and he's nothing apart from the grace of God in his life. Uh, believer, even honestly, even an unbeliever. Uh, God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Uh, the fact that you have unbelievers that spend practically a lifetime uh, arguing and fighting against, you know, not just the existence of God, but God's God's people, um, and he's you can you can say, oh, okay, he's lived a relatively good life. Uh, the fact is that's that's God's gift and God's grace in his life. Uh, because God wants to draw him to himself, and he's working to do that. Uh, he's, he's, he's very merciful to him uh, and, and trying to, you know, and, and basically blessing him. You know, he reigns upon the just as well as the unjust. And so the idolatry of uh, fornication basically states that, you know, God, you're not good. Uh, you can't satisfy me like this. And the fact is that's, that's stupid. <laughs> that's silly. And it's a misappropriation of what God uh, has done. It's a perversion of it. It's a twisting of it. So, um, we've seen God's command, okay, flee it, flee fornication. We've seen God's reasoning, okay, besides that fact that, um, you know, it's a defrauding, it's a potential for defrauding, and it's a sin against your own body. Uh, the fact is it's a misappropriation of what he has given you. You're not your own. You're bought with a price, and you can't do with your body as you want to. So where does that leave us? How do I then um, be somebody that is going to be pleasing to God in this area? Uh, you would, first off, acknowledge God's sovereignty in your life, okay? And that is, he's the one in charge, not me. I surrender myself to him. Uh, go to Romans 12. I know this is a familiar passage, uh, but it's so... So vital and so crucial. Okay, Romans 12, starting verse 1, says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Okay, so I first start out by acknowledging God's sovereignty in my life. I need to surrender my life because it's not mine. Okay, my body is not mine. Uh, my money is not mine. My abilities, my talents, my job that I have. I mean, granted, I was the one that, you know, when I had to put an application and done the work or whatever to get a proficiency at the skill that I would have. The fact is that's good. God's grace, and that's God's gifting, and God's the one that's allowed that to be the case, and so that's not mine. I'm supposed that's I'm supposed to have a mentality that says, this is God's, and I'm supposed to be using this and living this for God. You know, this is an offering unto Him. Uh, it's not mine to do with as I please. Um, and then I to renew uh, my mind, uh, and then it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, in Ephesians, we're told that we're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Okay, so I allow God to transform my thinking as I seek Him in His Word, and He points out truth to me. And then when I'm challenged with what uh, seems like um, not necessarily a discrepancy, in other words, where I don't align myself with where God is, you know, there's a misalignment, then I need to you know, obviously I need to acknowledge it, repent of it, and then, you know, choose God's path uh, over what I would have acknowledged as being my own. And then, uh, so we acknowledge God's uh, sovereignty in our life. Um, we already read this in Colossians, which was, I'm supposed to set my affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Uh, so my heart and my mind, uh, Jesus said it this way, you know, for where your treasure is there, where your heart be also. 
So I need to treasure that which is eternal and not just temporal. And then Philippians, go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And he's going he's gonna to start elaborating as far as how that's accomplished. But, you know, by doing all things without murmuring and disputing, and then a number of other things as well. But, okay, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, the idea there is that you have eternal life now, okay, it's not just future that you're gonna, you know, we're gonna go to heaven. Yeah, we have a home in heaven. We have a treasure incorruptible, undefiled that, undefiled that faded not away for us, you know, reserved in heaven for us. But eternal life is actually now. Eternal life started when we were born again, when we trusted Jesus as our Savior, and so we work. You know, as we live that out, we flesh that out now. Okay, God wants to do something in your life now today uh, and every day, you know, until either one, he takes you home or we're raptured, you know. So the thing is, we work that out and then we do that with fear and trembling. And the reason why, the reasoning he gave here is because it's God that worketh in us. Everything from the uh, beginning of basically uh, from verse 1 all the way to verse 11 is just elaborating the fact that Jesus is God. It's literally that, you know, Jesus is, is God Almighty. And then some, at some point, he's gonna, we're supposed to be of the same mindset as him. Um, and then so I am to live my life as such. And finally, in Galatians, we're told that if we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, and that's really key. And that is a matter of yielding. Uh, walking in the spirit is really a matter of yielding. Uh, it's a matter of recognizing and acknowledging certain truths. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, we're told that if you keep in remembrance, um, you know, what, he, what he's preached unto us, that we'll be saved. Speaking of saved from going into sin, that is that Christ died, you know, for our sins according to scriptures, that he was buried and then he rose again from the dead according, from the, according to the scriptures. It's, a, it's basically a restating of Romans 6 in that we are dead to sin because of our death in Christ, uh, and then we are, you know, when we were raised to walk in newness of life because of Christ's resurrection, uh, which happened basically, well, it literally happened about well, 2,000 years ago, but if I'm saying as far as it happened for us at the time that we accepted Christ as our Savior, so we were freed, not just from the penalty, but also the power of sin. Uh, later on, we'll be saved from the presence of sin, but we, of course, were rescued from, from sin. Uh, that we now are considered, God considers us, God views us not just as his child, you know, bought and paid for, but free to actually fulfill his will. We don't have to sin. Uh, and that he's made provision for us if we do, and which is, a, you know, the, uh, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, that, you know, uh, 1 John 1 9 also that, you know, uh, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but we have the ability to not go into, in other words, we can avoid sin. We don't have to give into temptation when it comes to knocking. And the reason I can avoid that is if I keep in remembrance what he did for me, which was he died for me. So he's freed me from it. I don't have to obey it. I'm, it's no longer my master. And then he didn't just, I, he didn't just stay dead, but he also rose again from the dead. So he's got new life and I can actually live God's will for me now and today and every day. Uh, so long as I yield myself, but I have to be of that mindset or that mentality that, hey, what am I? I'm free from this. This is true. This is fact. I'm supposed to reckon it, count it as fact, because it is, from God's perspective, it is fact. Uh, we don't always acknowledge it, which is why a lot of times we walk in sin and fall into sin. But the fact is, we are free. We don't have to give in to temptation when it comes to knocking. All right. Well, let's pray. 
Father, thank you for tonight. Lord, I pray now also that you would just, uh, Lord, help us to be ever, not just mindful of the devil and this world, but our flesh, Lord, that we would seek um, to live not just pure and clean and holy, Lord, but uh, be bold for you uh, in, in, in our witness, Lord, in our life. Uh, in our living out the, the truth of your word, Lord, um, that we would draw many to you uh, and that uh, we could be that difference um, that this world so desperately needs uh, because of what you've done on our behalf. Uh, uh, pray now, Lord, as um, uh, we take prayer requests, Lord, that you would answer in a manner, Lord, uh, that would basically, it could only be said that you did it uh, and mouths would be stopped because of the manner in which you answer, that it would encourage us to pray more, uh, and it would stop the mouth of the, the, the scoffers, Lord, uh, as a witness to the fact that, you know, you're really, you're acting around. I praise you, Jesus. Um, prayer requests? Prayer requests? Church in America. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, pray for some of these people who uh, react very favorably when we give them the gospel, not the visitation. Uh, it just seems like the devil comes along and they uh, fully intend to come, but he must just take it out of their mind. <laughs> so I pray the Lord will really convict them and uh, they will really desire to come and remember and come. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I pray now that you would just be with us. I pray, Father, in particular, uh, for those that are at the trip now at the Blue Iris Ranch, that, you know, Lord, you would continue to work in their hearts. Uh, I personally haven't heard any reports back as far as how things are going. I assume they're probably going well. I pray, Father, that you would, uh, Lord, for those that are um, that are actually going to be driving, I'm assuming he's probably passing, but I'm not sure if he's going to switch out with anybody. Um, that you would uh, give them the rest and the energy necessary so that they would make it back without incident. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, keep the bus from breaking down or having any complications so they would be able to get back with good time and then also uh, get back to be able to get uh, good rest for Sunday. I pray, Lord, that you continue to work in the hearts of the teens that are there. Uh, I pray, Lord, that uh, every single one would be uh, not just convinced, uh, convicted, but also, Lord, that, that you would work and have just free reign in their hearts, Lord, that they... Uh, would wholeheartedly give their hearts to, to, to serve you uh, with their life, Lord, uh, regardless of whatever vocation that you call them to, Lord, but in particular that they would be convinced of the fact that their life is not their own and that you have a plan for them and that you want to use them even now and that, Lord, that they would seek, that they, you, they would have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, they would have a hunger and a thirst and a passion uh, to want to know you from your word, Lord, and uh, that you would work mightily on their behalf in their sphere of influence, Lord, among their cousins, among their family members, uh, Lord, that we'd be able to see uh, just many victories, one that I know, Lord, in particular, some of them that uh, their parents aren't saved, and we've been, you know, we've been witnessing to them, we've been bringing, um, bringing them on the bus for services, but they personally, the parents maybe have visited once or twice, uh, or some, in some cases, not even at all yet, uh, but Lord, that uh, I pray that you would uh, work there, be gracious, and extend life to them and, and mercy and bring conviction to their hearts as well 
and that we'd be able to see so many of them uh, come to trust you and then um, really develop a household where you are exalted and you are preeminent and you're primary in the life there. I pray also, Father, um, that you would uh, continue being with um, Brother Beal, uh, um, Dr. Rice, and the others that are there as far as preaching, as far as guiding them with regard to what to, to, to preach on. Uh, I pray also, Father, for uh, America, Lord, um, as Patty has asked and requested, Lord, I pray. I know uh, it seems like there's a lot of vitriol and hatred towards uh, this president. Well, it doesn't seem there is a lot of vitriol and hatred towards this president and towards, it seems like, the bent towards righteousness, even though him himself uh, may not have always been a, a, a righteous man, Lord, that uh, the, the direction in which it, uh, he's, he's making a lot of the decisions, Lord, uh, that seem more fable, favorable towards uh, believers in Christian and, 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 and righteousness and morality, Lord, uh, that uh, I, I honestly, I can't really say how much of a majority or a minority uh, it seems like there's a lot because they have a loud voice, uh, but quite frankly, it um, seems like they uh, there's a there's a lot of just antagonism towards. Uh, as you, you you rightly said you you said in your word that uh, if they hated hated him, which the world does, uh, that they they're gonna hate us as well. And, and so I pray, Father, that you would uh, be with his administration, in particular with the, uh, President Trump, Lord, and then. Uh, Brother Mike Pence and uh, others in his administration, Lord, I pray in particular, if he's not saved, then he would come to trust you as Savior. Uh, Lord, I pray also for others that in the, uh, um, brother, uh, Mike Pence gives uh, testimony of being a born-again believer, uh, but others that maybe are not yet, Lord, that uh, not only we would live Christ by a peaceful life, Lord, uh, but we would see uh, just um, not just a restriction or restraining of, of the evil that would come, but also, Lord, that we just to have a window of freedom to be able to go ahead and proclaim, pro, proclaim the gospel uh, mightily and, 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 and just see you work in a mighty way, uh, Lord, in, in this time period, in this window that we have uh, with this administration. I pray, Father, also uh, that we would see many of those that are scoffers and haters, uh, Lord, come to trust you as a result of just the, the challenge and the affront seeming to, to, to their twisted sense of, of, of morality and their twisted sense of what is right um, and what, what they deem is wrong and really is right. Uh, I pray also, Father, um, uh, just for, for this church, Lord, uh, for Miami Beach as well, Lord, that we, uh, in, in part, that we would seek to, to live more surrendered to you, more holy, uh, have just invite you more into our life, Lord. Uh, you would have just have free reign in our hearts. I pray, Father, also for uh, just our our efforts at, at, at witnessing, Lord, and, and, and trying to reach Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, uh, and this world for you, Lord, that we would be more effective. I pray that you would guide us and give us wisdom in being effective and, and uh, efficient with our time with regard to uh, our witnessing uh, and, and the outreach that we have and the, the use of the resources that you've allotted to us. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would seek to be faithful to that, and um, Lord, entrust you with um, really what you want to do, and that we would have a vision in our heart, uh, attuned, in tune with uh, what it is that you desire. I know you wish that all men would come to know you, Lord. And I know that not all men will, but I know that that is your desire, that's your heart's desire, and we, we would want by faith in that, uh, seeking to uh, be witness to all men uh, faithfully. I pray, Father, also for um, Mr. Dolan said, particularly mentioned as far as positive responses in our uh, evangelism efforts, Lord. I pray that we would have in the neighborhoods and in some of the apartment, well, actually not just some of the apartment buildings in which we target, Lord, that we would, that you would uh, give us favor, one in particular with the leadership at some of those places that uh, may try to run us out, but also, Lord, that we would, um, Lord, I pray that you give some wisdom as far as, I'm not sure why it is. I know you know, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of other than, you know, why, uh, and then just a, a misunderstanding of what church really is, Lord, uh, because of the perversions of men that call themselves uh, believers but really are not, or men that are given over to the flesh and then that 
they walk in the flesh and then they misrepresent you and as a result um, they have a twisted image of who you are and what you want to do and so I pray Lord that we would be that change that difference uh, that not only they need to see but the world needs as far as representing you for who you really are as you really are Lord and also that we would just just be more wise as far as how to how to, how to be able to reach folks uh, I pray Lord that we would seek to be spirit filled so that you can just work through us as we talk to people, as we challenge them in their ideology and their thinking with regard to who you are and in the truth of the fact that, you know, they're sinners and that sin carries with it a death penalty, but they don't have to go to hell because you've made a way of escape, Lord, uh, through Christ. And it's by faith alone. I pray, Father, and also um, be, with, uh, be with Addie, be with um, Daniel Palella, Lord, uh, that uh, you would extend mercy to them and extend their life, Lord, that they would come have other opportunity to be able to trust you and Lord be able to see them come to trust you as Savior soon and Lord I pray now also for uh, just us here as we make our way home uh, later tonight we'll be able to get back safe get rested for tomorrow and uh, just uh, seek a uh, divine appointment that you have for us tomorrow praise in Jesus name Amen You're dismissed